Hello, welcome back the Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have Meghan, the Duchess of Sausages, and Prince Harry are launching not one, but two non-fiction series at Netflix featuring cooking, gardening, and professional polo. Well, I don't want to be the one who reigns on their parade, but I'm going to explain the exact reasons why I don't think this is going to work again. Now, this is not that I have anything against Meghan and Harry. As usual, I want them to succeed. I think that everyone that puts in the work on something should succeed. And if the Harkles put in the work on something, they should succeed as well, right? But this part is important. And make sure to notice the amount of people that is involved in this. It will be produced by Sony Pictures Television's The Intellectual Property Corporation, which is behind series including Hulu's The D Amelio Show and A&E's Leah Remini, Scientology and the Aftermath. Selena and Chef Leah Harrington will serve as showrunner with Michael Steed, who has helmed episodes of My Next Guest Needs No Introduction and Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown directing. Megan the Duchess of Sausages and Chanel Pisnik will exec produce for Archival Productions alongside Harrington and Aaron Seidman and Ellie Holzman for IPC. It comes after Megan launched her new business venture, American Riviera Orchard. Well, the first thing that I noticed is that I counted at least four people as producers and one of those four people is Megan. Now, my guess is that if Megan is going to create a show about cooking and friends, then she's going to be the star of the show. That makes sense, right? Using her infamy as part of the marketing. That I can understand. But I find a bit difficult for her to not be only the star of the show, but also be one of the producers. And for that, it's important to remember that what is the distinction between the director of a show, a uh, showrunner, a producer, and of course, the star. The director is the one who has the creative vision, the one who decides how the final product is going to look. It is the one who decides the general feel of the show, the artistic vision, so to speak. The producer is the more practical side of things, is the one who decides what gets done, which locations can be afforded, which guests can be invited, who can be hired to work on the project, Uh, what funding can be secured, how is marketing going to be done. And the showrunner is like a type of producer, but that is way more invested in the creative writing of the show. And yes, even shows that are claimed to be unscripted will have a showrunner that will have a general idea of how the show is going to unfold. Let's say that the showrunner is the one who decides what is going to happen. And you see that those are operations that are needed for the show to actually happen, for the showrunner's vision to actually take place. Now, if this is quote-unquote, wink, wink, uh, Megan's project, then you can imagine that she not only will want to be the second showrunner of the show, because that's what she is selling to Hollywood, that she's a producer of shows, but she would like to be involved in the artistic vision, which was, by the way, what happened back in the Netflix dog shite mentory when the first director was fired because, well, you can imagine that she did not share the same artistic vision with Megan and Megan wanted to control everything. We know that Megan has a controlling nature. Th that is a given. And she also wants to portray herself like, hey, I have exquisite taste and after all you know that she originally wanted William and she had to settle for the Temu prince but the problem is that when you combine both things a uh, controlling nature and wanting to prove your exquisite taste to the world in a cooking show with friends uh, she will want to control the script the artistic vision the pacing or the editing of the show itself which guests are green-lighted, which ones are not approved, how is the marketing done, how does she appear in it, and that will be just not possible. That level of micromanagement is something that very few people can pull off. Micromanagement is when you are involved at every single decision, every single part of a process. 
And one of the few examples of people in entertainment industry who have been uh, successful micromanagers has been George Lucas. I read his biography about how he made his first shorts and then got the pitch for Star Wars to be made. And they made the first three movies. And that was insane. I mean, he put everything on the line. He destroyed his marriage. He put on the line the relationships with his children, with his friends, everything for years. It was relentless. There are, are no words to describe his obsession. And of course, we're talking about a creative mind. George Lucas, which at the same time had this 100% hands-on approach to every single part of the production, simultaneously having this huge vision of marketing. And the only way to catalyze everything was through, through sheer hard work. There was no, no way around it. And it's obvious that neither Megan or Harry even combined have what it takes to get this done. What Megan should do is... If she wants to make this kind of show, you hire the best director that uh, can give your vision to life, but leave the director on his or her own terms and hire people who have the experience to produce a show. But like the people who already are on board with the solid experience bringing a TV show to life. But you let them do their work so you can focus on what you do best, which should be uh, being on camera. But the problem is that Megan's controlling nature will absolutely work against her. That is what's going to happen. That is wh what always happens with Megan. And again, I want to make this clear. I am not wishing her bad luck or anything. I'm just looking at it from what I've seen in countless other examples of entertainment business and what it takes to get a show like this running. So this will go the way of friction and nothing being done for months with this classic Megan fair. But now let's talk about Harry. It says that Harry wants to create a series about the world of professional polo. It says this series will explore the world of the sport, which is known primarily for its aesthetic and social scene. It will pull the curtain back on the grit and passion of the sport, capturing players and all it takes to compete at the highest level. Prince Harry has been known as a keen polo player and is often photographed playing internationally. Now, my first impulse was saying, who's going to watch a series about polo? And that is a wrong question to ask. Because, of course, one thinks that uh, something has to be popular to be a good fit for a series, right? I mean, no matter the topic, good storytelling will always win in the end. And... If we think of elitist sports, we could say that motor sports are way more elitist than polo. And in fact, there's a series that many of you must be familiar with, which is Formula One Drive to Survive, which is an amazing series based on real life seasons of the Formula One and has a level of drama and storytelling that is almost like you're actually watching a soap opera in a good sense of the word. There's all these emotions, there's all this drama, there's all this tension. There's all that is happening at any given time with the protagonists of this sport, even if there's so few people in the world who practice it at this level. But the distinction is how many people tune in to this sport on any given year all over the world, because that's like part of the conversation, right? It's like uh, football. How many people can practice football in the world at any given time? Well, they, they only need a ball. How many people watch football? A lot. We're talking about billions. And how many people practice football at a professional level? Well, quite some of them. It's not like, for example, tennis, in which you have this zero-sum game that only one can be the best in the world at any given time. For the Formula One, you have very, very, very few people racing at a professional level, but you have this massive audience of the sport. So it doesn't matter if the sport is as elitist as you can get, as long as you have this massive audience that will be interested in the drama. But let's put it this way. How many Formula One drivers can you name off the top of your head? both retired and current, and that's an easy one. I remember that I was like eight years old, and 
I could already name Fittipaldi, Niki Lauda, and a bunch of others. But how many famous polo players can you name off the top of your head? Let's see. Prince William, uh, Harry, King Charles, Zara Tindall, uh, Nacho. Um, well, that's, that's it for me. And obviously, when it comes to professional polo players, my number is uh, exactly zero. This is, this is to prove a point, that no matter how much storytelling, you will also need to introduce the players to a broader audience. And that is another level of difficulty on show's production. But at the same time, I know the power of storytelling. And good storytelling could make something amazing from, I don't know, lacrosse. I have nothing against lacrosse, but it's lacrosse you know, or, or maybe that crazy river pole vaulting in the Netherlands. That would be crazy as well. I would watch that. Now, there's the intersection of what is wrong with both of these shows. We guess that Harry will be prominently featured on the polo one, and Megan is going to be prominently featured on the cooking show. And that is a problem. It's not only that you need storytelling, but you need relatability. You need someone in your show to be relatable. In fact, when you see as the shows the, these people have produced, I mean the other producers of Megan's show, you see the D'Amelio show with Charlie D'Amelio and her family who has a huge fan base from TikTok, Selena and Chef, Selena Gomez, and the one who produced Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. And Anthony also being highly relatable, or at least that was how his show portrayed him. But even if you have a show like the uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which some of them are the good guys, some of them are the not that empty headed ones, and the others are the villains, you need that dynamic because that's where the drama starts, right? And for that matter, for storytelling to be effective, you need relatable protagonists. And in the case of Harry, well, he's not very relatable in any way. In fact, any relatability that he had, he destroyed it in the past five years. And Megan is pretty much the same. And if it's a cooking show, it will be Megan with one or two guests at any given time. There will be not much drama in there. So, again... These are the reasons why I think Harry and Meghan's upcoming shows about cooking and polo are not going to take off the ground. At first, Meghan's show is going to take far too long because of friction. Because all those producers are not going to get along. I I'm going to predict this already. People are going to leave the production of the show. People are going to get changed, fired, moved, whatever. Just to please Meghan's controlling nature. That is what is going to happen. And I don't think we're going to see anything of this before 2025. But Rogis, I would love to know what you think about this in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And remember, much love and bliss.